you've been feeling so small Watch the clock ticking off the wall But tonight I'm letting it go Spend my coin for sure I'm gonna be myself Or I could be someone else No one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive It's just what I do when I'm out So try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me No, no, nothing can break me Lay my troubles to rest Blow the smoke through my cigarette City lights looking fine my time now I'm gonna be myself or I could be someone else no one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive it's just what I do when I'm out so try not to hold me down feel alive Myself, I'm gonna be someone else I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes What's going on, everybody? Hello, hello, hello. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I am so stoked about today. I'm super excited because we have Lorraine Ball back. She has maybe been here like 47 times. I'm not sure. <laughs> I lost track a long time ago. But Lorraine is an amazing presenter. She always gives us so much value in what she teaches us. So super, super excited about today. Actually, I'm ready to take notes because it's about SEO, right? Content-based SEO. We're going to learn about what the heck that even is. And I will tell you, SEO is one of those things that is kind of like a science and it's really important. And so it's very important, not only just with websites, but if you can learn, understand what SEO is and content-based SEO, you're going to be able to apply this in other places. If you're on YouTube, SEO is important, right? If you're creating podcasts, SEO is important. SEO is becoming, it's not going away. There was a time when people thought, SEO is like no big deal anymore. Mm -mm. Nope, that's false. That's actually not true. SEO is still very critical and very important. So really excited that we have Lorraine here with us this morning who's going to be talking about that. So good morning, everyone. Say hello. Finally, finally, we got people in the comments. Julie is here. Good morning, Julie. Courtney is here as well. Hello, Courtney. Welcome back. And we have Megan Weaver, of course. Hello, Megan. How are, or Morgan, how are you this morning? Of course, we always have Lucas with us, right? And we've got Peggy. Uh, Amy is here. So good morning. Make sure you say hello in the comments. We love to get to know who's here. And if you're new, if this is the first time you're catching us, whether it be live, uh, virtually, or even like ever, ever, because we used to be in person, which we're working on getting together in person again. Let me know in the comments that this is your first time. We love to know. We love to welcome our new our first timers for sure. 
So Michelle is here. She's from the Ball State Graduate School. It's good to see you again, Michelle. We haven't, again, Michelle's one of our regulars, used to attend our, our in-person events. So, and just so you know, we used to be in person, right? So we used to always meet at the Innovation Connector. We do this every third Thursday of the month. So I always say, open up your calendar, put a little reoccurring meeting in there so that you don't ever miss it. We are working on a getting back to maybe looking at a hybrid model where we're going to be together in person. Uh, with a certain number of people, but then also still live streaming virtually because not everybody can get out. And some people are kind of really liking this whole watching us in their pajamas. So if you're watching in your pajamas, fantastic. Love it. Fantastic. We're excited you're here. So Susan is here as well. She's a longtime follower, first time attendee. Well, Susan, we are so excited that you're catching us live today. Good morning. All right. So before we get started, I do want to make sure, as I, sa as I said earlier, that let, let you know that we do meet every third Thursday. So Next month, that is going to be on May 20th. So you can go ahead and put that on your calendar right now, 8.30 in the morning, right? So also, this is all organized by a volunteer committee. So I want to make sure that I give my fellow committee members uh, a little bit of a highlight here because we all get together. We kind of, we've well, we'll get together. We haven't gotten together. We've been doing it virtually for a while, planning and organizing. And we look for sponsors and we look for presenters to bring to you guys so that we can um, put this put this uh, presentation on for y'all. So uh, Peggy Snova is our fearless leader, as I always like to say. She is with the Indiana uh, Small Business Development Center. So we have Peggy with us. We also have Jamie Faulkner with Northwest Bank. Uh, we've got Callie Selenke with the Community Foundation of Delaware County. And then we have Lucas Tetra with Widinger Strategic Services. He's always our YouTube person. He's always over there hanging on YouTube, but Amy's over there as well uh, this morning. So if you're over there on YouTube, then uh, make sure you give uh, Lucas a shout out. He's Facebookless. We always tease him about that. We also have Kyle Reniger with Sea Salt and Cinnamon. Uh, he's probably working this morning, maybe delivering some stuff or baking and, and all those things. And then, of course, me. I'm Melanie. Uh, Diane, I have a podcast called DIY Marketing School. And I am uh, I help people with live video. I help them get their, their butts out there on live video. So that's what I like to do. All right, my friends. So we have... Let me see here. Amy says, this is my first official meeting. I'm the communications administrator with the Community Foundation of Muncie and Delaware County. Well, good morning, Amy. Welcome. And we have Kimberly Ferguson in-house, Pinkleaf, and Patterson Block of Muncie. Good morning. What she means by that is that she, <laughs> she is the founder uh, of Pinkleaf, but she also, you know, that big, historic, mustard-colored building in downtown Muncie. Kimberly is the owner of that. She recently bought that. She's moving Pink Leaf in there, and she's got all kinds of really exciting plans for that. So uh, that's very exciting for our downtown uh, as well. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I, I explain what that is because not everybody knows. Like, she basically bought an entire block. <laughs> that building is huge. So um, Courtney, uh, good morning. And then Lucas. Lucas says, nice to have someone else on YouTube with me. So yeah, just so you guys know, we are multi-streaming. And what that means is that we are live on Facebook, so our business page over there, ECI Social Media Group. So make sure you like and follow, or excuse me, follow the page. There are no more page likes anymore. And then also we are streaming over on YouTube as well. So if you are, if you like YouTube and you like hanging out on YouTube, then feel free to go over there and watch us on YouTube. And make sure that you uh, subscribe to our channel and click on that little notification bell so that you get that notification when we do go live. So would love to uh, see you guys do that. So we've also got... Um, Shonda is here. She is with the Barnes Sewer and Septic of Winchester. Yes. So speak Muncie shirt. Yes. So I'm wearing my Muncie shirt. Whoop. I like the shirt. I always, I like the colors. I like the colors and I like the style of shirt. So I got this at the Muncie Brewfest a few years ago, it Was uh, which I like love the shirt. I would like to have more of them. So if you guys know where I can get more of these, help a sister out. So, all right. So I am going to go ahead and let you know that we are also today, we are sponsored by Farmhouse Creative. So we like to bring in sponsors because we like to showcase people. We like to help give people a place, a platform where they can showcase their business or some initiatives that they have going on. And so we have our very good friends, Matt Howell and Angie Rogers Howell with us today with Farmhouse Creative. So I'm going to go ahead and let get, have them give me a thumbs up. They are backstage. Make sure they are ready to go. So I'm going to bring them up. These are familiar faces, of course, too. To ECI social media group. So good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you guys today? Good. Forgive the glare on my glasses because we've got it our happens. ring light going. It's the ring light. I know you have to like tilt them sometimes. You have to get that's what I'm doing. So if I look creative. weird, that's why. <laughs> hey, nobody would have noticed. It's all good. You guys look great this morning with your green wall and everything. You're very on brand. Oh, look at that. Oh. I dig it. I dig it. Awesome. <laughs> 
I'm going to go ahead and just hand it over to you guys and let you guys talk about Farmhouse for us. Thanks for sponsoring today. Excellent. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm Matt. I'm Angie. Good to see you guys today this morning. Well, we are a marketing company, Farmhouse Creative. We've been around since 2012. Mm -hmm. Angie started the company uh, at our table there at the farmhouse, and yep. we got really creative and said Farmhouse Creative. That's the name of the company. We live on a farm and <laughs> a farm farmhouse on a farm and farmland. So there you go. Um, I own the company, and that works for me. Ah. I joined her in 2014 to bring uh, websites to that the, the the company but before that she was all print print so. did graphic design all that good stuff is where i started and that's what, still what we do a lot of people think of farmhouse is just websites which is great we'll do your website that's fabulous but we also do graphic design print services promotional products anything with ink on it we can print it so um that kind of slowed down a little bit during the pandemic because not everyone's going to trade shows and networking events and handing out their journey business cards to everybody and so we totally get that and we understand that as well so we've kind of pivoted not that we're changing our direction but you know we're just kind of going with the times and the flow and trying to just see what brings our comes our way and that has caused uh, people to come to us for video and uh, photos. So headshots or um, corporate photos of them working around the office or whatever they do, uh, we can we can now do that. And of course, video. Uh, we've done a couple, you know, really traditional corporate type videos. So uh, the new Hillcroft website, Hillcroft.org. You can see uh, some of our work there with uh, Nate um, Spell. Spell of Three Media. He put that together and then we worked with orange wave uh mikey and uh, produced the walk a mile music video this year to uh to kick off the walk a mile fundraiser for them yep so doing a lot of different things um whether it's video photos digital media social media uh management all that yes. good stuff sorry i couldn't think of what I'm talking about. Um, and if we can't do it or we don't want to do it or it's not really in our wheelhouse, that's cool. We'll still, we'd love to talk to you about it. And if we can't do it, then we can connect you with a partner in the community because we all work together and hang out together and so we can point you in the right direction if we can't handle that for you. Hey, thank you, Morgan. Yeah, those were so cute. The graphics for Newcastle Main Street. We got to help with those and some thank you cards and all kinds of cool stuff. So that's been a fun project as well. So thanks, Morgan. And of course, we've been doing quite a few websites uh, this past year Lots with the pandemic going on. Um, and we've even, you know, we are pretty much a WordPress based website uh, shop. So a WordPress shop, but we've gotten into Square Sites, Weebly, Wix, um, all those other things. Now we don't create in them like start fresh or anything like that, but if you've already got one and you need help with it, we've worked in enough uh, systems that we can help you out and make it work. Yep. Uh, yes, Kimberly Farmhouse did the uh, Patterson Block logo, and we're working on their signage. So and it was very fun to work on. Thank you. You can go to KimberlyHowellFerguson.com. She has a personal blog through Farmhouse Creative, so shout out to her. Yep. Buffy, we love you too, and one day soon we will get to see you because we are working on getting fully vaccinated. Yes, <laughs> we'll go have lunch somewhere. Absolutely. The other thing we do, not just Farmhouse Creative as a whole, a marketing company, we have a podcast. We have a podcast. Maybe you've heard of us. Maybe you checked out our presentation here, I don't know, like a month or two ago. Was it on here? Oh, maybe it wasn't. That no. was a different group. That was a different group. Sorry, I got my groups mixed up. Shocker, huh? Uh, but yes, we have a podcast. It's called Good Girl Gone Boss. We interview awesome women in our community and people in our community. So we do great things. Uh, Good Girl Gone Boss, new episodes launch every Tuesday. We are on episode 107, I think, right? Yeah, something like that. So, so that's at least 107 interviews with women of interest here in Muncie. Yeah, it's fun. We like it. We get to talk to somebody new every week um, and learn awesome things about them. So. And if you are a woman of interest in Muncie, Beyond you're Muncie. probably on the list somewhere. Yeah, we, you are, we I have, got I have a list, but I haven't gotten <laughs> to you. But if, you, if anyone ever has suggestions, I'm always welcome to suggestions because you guys know people that I don't necessarily know. So um, let me know. Let's see. Uh, the, just to wrap it up, we've got a giveaway we'll today. It. We'll do it like the Rosebud. Rosebud Fantastic. gift certificate. That's what you're going to win today from Farmhouse Creative. Yeah, Rosebud is a new coffee house down on the south side of Muncie, and that, they are Hoyt, awesome. Is it on Hoyt Street? Is that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hoyt yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. I think and the caffeine is open 
next week. Like the, the 20, 27th. The 27th. So we're going to have yeah. two coffee shops right here fantastic. in Muncie again, local owned. <laughs> yeah. And I know they, they, they have some collaborations. They work together um, with some stuff. I think that, so I love that. I absolutely love that, that we have these two amazing places that actually are also working together. So also both owned by women, right? So fantastic stuff right there. Absolutely. Well, I, Angie and Matt, thank you so much again for being our sponsor today. We are super, super grateful that you guys are here and we love that you guys are so great in our community and you support so many businesses. I actually just yesterday <laughs> sent someone, I told them to contact you guys, um, about social media stuff. So I definitely think that um, I'm glad that you guys are thriving and expanding and taking on all these other things because all these businesses, especially local businesses, they need it. So I'm really grateful that we have you in our community to help people. So, all right. Well, thank you so much again. And as we mentioned, they have a giveaway for us. So stick around. We will be doing the giveaway at the end. Basically, we pick someone that's very engaged. You're in the comments. We always pick the person who we think is kind of hanging out very active. And also we try to pick somebody who hasn't won before. So there you go. All right, Angie and Matt, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Bye. Man, I just love them. Don't you guys love them? So again, if you're interested in being a sponsor, definitely send us a message. Let us know. Just send us a DM over on Facebook and let us know if you are interested in being a sponsor because we love having local, we love giving this as a place, having this as a place where our local businesses or communities or nonprofits can showcase some things that they have going on. And we are very grateful for Matt and Angie for all that they do. In fact, Matt is a big piece of helping us with our, he built the website, helped to build the original website. He kind of helps us still with some back end stuff when we need his help. So very, very grateful for them for sure. So Okay, let me see. Uh, Courtney, yes, I saw the comment about the shirt. Thank you very much for that. All right, we are going to get going, right? We're going to bring Lorraine up. We're ready. I've got my stuff ready. I'm going to be taking notes today. So I'm super excited. So we're going to be learning about content-based SEO from Lorraine Ball. Uh, so Lorraine, I'm going to let her introduce herself because her introduction might be different than it used to be because she's got some new news to share possibly, right? So Lorraine, if you're ready, give me a thumbs up and I'll bring you up on stage. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning. How are you this morning? I am good. I'm chipper. I'm ready for this. I'm excited to learn this morning. So yeah, I've got, I always like whenever you're here, I'm like, okay, I can't multitask. I actually have to pay attention and I'm taking notes. So you're- All right. Well, I'm going to try to keep you on your toes. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be great. Well, as I mentioned, why don't you do your own introduction today? Because the introduction might be a little different and people may not know about some of the new and exciting things that you have going on. So um, my name is Lorraine Ball and I am the founder of the Digital Toolbox and I have a podcast called More Than A Few Words. If you guys have been following me for any length of time, you're like, no, no wait a minute. She's the founder of Roundpeg. Well, as of February 2nd, hey Peggy, how are you? Um, as of February 2nd, I actually have sold Roundpeg. Um, the company that has purchased us, Dexia, is out of Michigan. We're really excited about the transition because they are kind of us, but a little bit bigger. They have the same energy and the same emphasis on helping businesses. And it was like a match made in heaven. So I'm really excited about the change. I'm still involved with Roundpeg on a consulting basis, but I really have an opportunity now to pursue my passion um, for training and <laughs> thank you, Morgan, um, my passion for training and helping businesses and talking because I like to talk. So um, that's where I am. You can find more about the Digital Toolbox at digitaltoolbox.club. And I'm sure we'll link to it and show it off later. But with that, Melanie, if you're cool, I'm going to get started. We're going we're gonna to talk about content-based SEO. And I have slides, so you're going to pop those up and down as you feel appropriate. You have to so, also tell us about the cats because we hear the cats, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so my office cats have come home with me. <laughs> um, you know, after, and, and this was really funny. Oh, wait, hey, hold on. Benny wanted to say hello. <laughs> Um, so that's Benny. Okay. Pop um, on down, already, baby. My, my eyes are already itching just looking at the cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, for years, we had office cats. Benny and Clyde lived at the office. And um, the first wave of the pandemic, they stayed in the office. And I would just go over there every day and hang out with them. And then everybody, we came back part time which was okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, for Thanksgiving, we sent everybody home between Thanksgiving and Christmas because everybody was going to be with just too many more people. And I brought the cats home and they were like, damn, there's soft surfaces here. <laughs> 
There's carpet. There are beds. We're not going back. <laughs> That's hilarious. So yeah. now we have now we have dogs at Round Peg, though. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, oh. I knew the, the cats were always part of the Round Peg family. Uh, of course, I always remember seeing that. So, uh, Megan, thanks for the the heads up on my uh, audio volumes. I just bumped up my audio volume. So appreciate that. Uh, Lorraine, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. I'm going to add your slides to the deck. And then everybody, Lorraine is going to be asking you some questions. So get ready to be in the comments. She loves back and forth communication. And I know that when we're virtual, it's not quite the same. We're not in a room with people. So get in those comments and definitely be letting us know, let Lorraine know if things are resonating with you. And also, she is going to be asking some questions as she goes along. So be ready and get in those comments for us, you guys. All right, Lorraine. It's off to you. Okay, so today we're going to talk about content-based SEO. Yep. And, e I'm ready <laughs> and everybody now. always asks me, well, what is content-based SEO? And basically what it is is really switching how you think about SEO. Because for the last decade, everybody's been thinking about keyword, keyword, keyword. I got to have so many keywords. I got to have so many links. I got to have, I got to have, I got to have. And really there's emphasis about the, the process and the technology. And everybody's really worried about taking care of Google. Well, here's the thing. You create these great posts that are keyword rich, that are optimized, that have inbound links and outbound links and great titles and meta descriptions. And then somebody comes to your website and they're like, really? Is that it? Because what they go to Google for is questions. They have questions and they're looking for answers. And so what I want you to do and what this whole conversation is about is finding ways to answer the questions. Why? Number one, it creates a much better user experience. People who come to your website will actually stay and hang out because they will have found what they're looking for, but also because Google is paying attention to the questions. Google is now looking at how well your website matches up and answers the questions. So it's not about one sentence with a keyword. It's about a rich, informative piece of content that only you can write that is uniquely yours. And Google goes, wow, somebody had that question and this is the best answer. And so what I want you to do is really Give yourself permission to stop thinking a lot about the rules of SEO and start thinking about creating answers to questions. And there are really four main kinds of questions that you want to answer. The first is informational questions because, well, these four questions kind of line up with a customer's journey. I'm thinking about buying a product. I don't know anything about this product or service. I'm going to ask those informational questions. Navigation questions are more about where do I buy and how do I get to this? Commercial investigation is, okay, I've done my basic research. Now I want to know, is A better than B? What's the pricing? How do I use? Really kind of getting into the nuts and bolts. And then the last type of question is more the transactional. So we're going to take a closer look at some of these. So let's start with informational questions. A good informational question starts with what is? What is web design? What is SEO? What is a CPA? Do I need one? How do I file my quarterly payroll taxes? How do I... Um, get a rental contract. What do I need to know to do? Very basic. I mean, they don't even really know where to start. So they are looking for tips, ideas, suggestions. This is really the content that you're going to create at this stage is really thinking about resources, tutorials, how-to videos. So um, if you have a screen capture video tool on your website and you can navigate a software product. That's going to be great here. Um, this is not where you start chump thumping your chest saying how great you are. People don't really even know what it is they're looking for. So resources that are like how to decide whether you need X or Y, or actually that's more the later, just 
How do I buy? What should I be looking for? What is? So what I want to do is I want to talk about you rather than me giving you a bunch of possible questions. I'd love to know what industries you're in. And let's talk about some of the informational questions. When people are just starting out, and let's talk a little bit about some of the resources. So for example, on Tish Flooring, they are doing a lot with waterproof flooring. So we did a lot of questions around what is waterproof flooring? What is engineered hardwood? One of their pain points and this is also a place where you might want to add, um, think about the questions that people are asking is um, things that always cause you pain. When you install a floor, most people don't know that you actually have to deal with the subflooring and that can add a little bit of cost. So what is a subfloor? Why do I need it? How expensive it is? Healthcare. Oh, questions around COVID. Okay, Courtney, that's awesome. So it might be something as simple as, uh, you know, and obviously some of these have been um, done a lot lately. You know, what are the symptoms of COVID? What are the restrictions? What are the current laws? Um, but if you're in an industry like that, where the stuff is changing all the time, you probably want to have a single page on your website where you're constantly adding those updates. That's going to have great SEO value. The other thing that's going to be really, really helpful for an organization like yours is going to be, um, thank you, thank you, Benny, thank you for joining us, um, is going to be uh, tied around what's happening locally. And that's going to give you that competitive advantage in terms of SEO. You're not going to be a national authority on SEO. That's, that's probably not going to happen. And so instead, what you want to do is um, work on, um, uh, really work on what's happening in Marion County. How have the rules changed in Marion County? You know, today's update with uh, the pause on the J and J. So writing answers to the questions you know you're going to get. Okay, anybody else have a question? Don't be shy. Oh, I'm going to come back to you later then. Let's move on to the second type of question, which is navigation. These are questions that people will ask when they're looking for you or for a brand that you carry. So navigation questions are going to be more around things like, what hours are you open? Are you open? Are you taking appointments? Um, a lot of my home service clients um, can do very well with navigation questions for the brands that they carry. So um, flooring contractor represents Mannington and Shaw, you know, do you carry Mannington products? Do you service Lennox air conditioning? Do you sell Delta faucets? Where can I find? So the question might be, where can I find a Delta faucet distributor? Where can I buy? How can I purchase? Who can service? Those are kind of navigation questions. And I want to show you this particular chart. And Melanie, maybe if you could blow the chart up and take me out so people can get a better look at this graph. Um, what this is, this actually comes from Google Search Console. You should be looking at your Google Search Console. I know this is a little geeky. What you want to know is how are people finding you? When you see direct I'm sorry, let's do discovery first. When you see discovery traffic, this says that your organic SEO is working, that your informational content is working. People are out there and they're looking for plumber near me, butcher near me, baker near me, and they're seeing you, okay? That's the discovery traffic. The navig and that is the, so the discovery traffic really matches up to your informational questions. The more answers you can create and the more content you can write around informational questions, the more traffic you're going to see here. Conversely, 
navigation questions are direct and branded. Direct is somebody was looking specifically for you by name and branded questions are people were looking for the products that you carry. This is actually a screen grab from one of our clients. They, um, uh, they are a flooring contractor. And so they, we are thrilled that the majority of their traffic is discovery. That tells them that the work we're doing is actually working, which yay us. But the other thing is that this really shows that the content they're creating, the informational content is working. Okay, so what comes next? Convers commercial investigation. When people are at this point in the process, they're really focused on, well, I, I, I know I'm going to buy a car um, and I've kind of gotten it narrowed down to um, a Chevy or a Ford. Well, which is better? What's the difference? And content at this stage, when you're working at content here, this is where reviews and testimonials are great, case studies and comparison blog posts. I will tell you that for every one of my clients that I've worked with for any length of time, there is that one blog post that probably we wrote originally as kind of a, a throwaway because we needed to have something. And it's always the one that turns into this amazing resource for us. And it is, when I go back and I look at it, it's always a, what's the difference between? On Randall Beans, um, they, they sell beans in glass jars. We wrote a post called, what's the difference between Great Northern White and Navy Beans? The Great Northern White is the Randall product. A decade later, think about that folks, a decade later, that post still ranked number one for that question. And it drove traffic and it still does drive traffic to their website every week. For Tish Flooring, the question is, what's the difference between um, hardwood and engineered hardwood? For um, a heating and air conditioning company, it's what's the difference between um, uh, a whole house humidifier and a room humidifier? The cool thing is none of these are really tough posts to write because it's a question that this customer was answering all the time. People were always asking it. Um, the other thing that people are looking for in the commercial investigation stage is they're comparing companies. They're not just comparing products. Maybe they've gotten a proposal from two or three different companies, and that's why reviews and testimonials become so important in this stage of the buying process and in this part of your content program. And a lot of those reviews are going to live on other sites, but they're going to link back to you. And I would periodically read through all of those reviews and testimonials, and I would look for one or two of the very best. Why? Because you want to pull those onto your website. What's amazing about a review and a testimonial is that your customer is talking about you in their language. They're using the words that are most logical for them to describe what you do. They're not using your jargon or your buzzwords. They're using their words. Well, if that's the language one customer uses, it's going to be the language that the next customer is going to use when they do what? Go to Google and ask the question, who is the best plumber in Muncie? And you want it to be you. And case studies, um, <laughs> good morning, Randy. Nice to see you. Um, one of the um, uh, one of the things with case studies is it gives you an opportunity to demonstrate that you can use um, that you can use 
th that I can look at your product or service. I'm sorry, the cat's in my way and I'm stumbling a little bit. Um, that it, what it does, what a case study does is it allows you to demonstrate to a potential customer that, that you've worked with and solved a problem for someone like you. Okay. You know what? I want to, there we go. Let's talk about you for a moment. Um, that question, what's the difference between? I would love to see some examples coming up from you of how you might use that what's the difference question. Um, on uh, Matt, if you don't have a blog post on your website, uh, that is what's the difference between WordPress and Wix? Um, or what's the difference between GoDaddy and HostMonster? Um, you're missing out. If you are a, uh, a restaurant and you have a favorite dish or a favorite spice that you always use, what's the difference between our tacos and everybody else's? Um, or, um, you know, what's the difference between a bean taco and a beef taco? Sounds silly, right? Nobody, nobody searches that. Try it. You would be amazed how many people actually um, do try those um, those different uh, uh, those silly questions. I I actually love this. I had to pop in here because I love this. Be and it's it's funny because I never really looked at it this way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just sort of naturally converts into content because I'm one of those people where. You know, you get asked the same questions over and over and over and over and over, right? So you just naturally convert it to content. But actually sitting down and making this like a category, like mm -hmm. sitting down and during your planning process, what are things you can compare? Like for me, I did a, a collaboration with uh, Luria Petrucci and we did a what's the difference between Restream and StreamYard as far as platforms yes. for live streaming? What's the difference between this? I mean, I watch these videos all the time, but mm -hmm. I don't necessarily create them. So like microphone comparisons, camera comparisons. So, you know, what's the difference? Like the, the healthcare example came up earlier. Like what's the difference between these different vaccines? What's the difference between this versus that? So I do think that it's really interesting, but I never thought of this as an actual category. It just sort of like, I guess, <laughs> sort of fell into the other categories. But I like the idea of intentionally sitting down and saying, what are some things we can compare? You know, Matt and Angie were talking earlier about Wix versus mm -hmm. Weebly versus Squarespace versus WordPress. <laughs> you know, that's like content gold for them, of course. So um, very, very good. I would love to see everyone else get in the comments too. I know, by the way, Randy, got to give Randy a super special shout out. Like, what's up, Randy? We haven't seen Randy in a long time. So um, he says between leadership and management or between a full vehicle wrap and partial. Yeah, that's a good one. Absolutely. Right. Awesome. Last, I'm going to give it back to you, Lorraine. <laughs> no, thanks for joining, Melody. And I mean, that's the whole thing is that as you start to think about what you sell, um, uh, as a homeschool mom, comparison uh, one of the, is one of the five common topics. So um, good morning, Brooke. It is so nice to see you this morning. And you know, um, as a, a homeschooling parent, you're always looking for, and you're, you know, you're hearing trends. So as a consumer, you're like, okay, I've heard about this teaching method and this teaching method. What's the difference? Which one is better for my child? I've heard about these three different diet plans. Which one is the best? Um, what you're tapping into is um, people who know just a little bit. They know enough to, they, they've done that first level of investigation and now they're ready to kind of go just one step higher. And that's what you're trying to address um, with this content-based program. Okay, I want to go back because I jumped over it. Oops, transactional. Transactional, um, questions are more relevant in the um, business to consumer uh, arena. You know, you're not going to have a lot of, you, you might have some people typing in, um, you know, what should a website cost? Um, as a B2B company, you have to decide whether you want to play in that arena because typically if people are looking for discounts and coupons, um, in the B2B space, you're typically going to be running into clients that don't want to spend a lot of money, which may not be a great fit for you. So spending a lot of energy here may not be the best 
of the different question types. Um, this is more relevant for uh, B2C. You know, where can I find the best price? Where can I find a coupon? How do I get a discount on? So if you are running a business to consumer service, if you're running a, a restaurant or um, a donut shop, today's donut special, best donut pricing in Muncie, um, best breakfast deal, best breakfast value, um, anything like that would fall into this transactional category. All right. So here's your first homework assignment. This is something I want you to write down and I want you to work on this and make a commitment to work on it over the next week. I'm going to give you a week. Write down three questions for each of the phases of your buying process. What do people ask when they're just getting started and they don't even know what to ask. What do they ask about you to answer some of those navigational questions about where you do business, how you do business, what brands do you carry? What are the questions people ask in the commercial investigation phase? Those are those comparison questions. And then finally, if you are in the consumer space, kind of retail purchase, you may want to think about those transactional. The nice thing is even if you only write down nine questions, you got a month and a half's worth of blog posts and content to develop. Okay, so you've got these questions and this is going to be the next thing is, do you answer them? So you've brainstormed these questions and you're like, these are really important questions. Okay. Do you answer that question specifically? If I, if you tell me that the most important question, the question everybody wants to know the answer to is, what's the difference between, you know, why, uh, all right, I'm going to tell you the one that, that drove us crazy. Why do I have to pay for hosting and design and domain registration? And every time I answered this question, it made me crazy. I finally wrote a blog post and explained that a, um, a website's like a mobile home. It's got all the amenities of home, but it ain't no fun to live in if you don't hook it up in a trailer park with running water and electricity. And your hosting company is your trailer park. And so you can move your trailer from, host, uh, from trailer park one to trailer park two. It's still your trailer. And then your domain name is kind of like the forwarding address for your for your mail. So if you do move your trailer park, people, the post office knows where to send mail to you. Once I wrote that post, number one, every time I got the question, I could just send the link. But also that post really started to do well because it answered the question. So start looking at your website. Do you answer the question? Do you have pages, blog posts, images, or video that's tied around that question? And are you getting traffic to that content? The next thing is if you have these questions, you want to look and see both search results and volume. And this is a little geeky. We are going to get into a little bit of geeky SEO work um, just to see if you're going to build out all this content about this question, is it a good question? You don't have any content on it. You think you're going to write a blog post. It's going to make you a millionaire. Does anybody care? And then um, what are alternative and related questions? And we actually, there we go. We actually created a little spreadsheet that we, um, we use to evaluate questions. So here are uh, some that we did for a flooring company. The first thing we did is we wrote down the questions we thought would be interesting. And then all we did is we went to Google. You do a Google search. I typed in this question and it will tell you right at the top of the page how many search results it returns in less than a second. Well, the more search results, the more competitive. So this one is installation included in the price of my floor. There are, how many zeros is that? 3,720,000,000 different blog posts, pages, posts, pictures, content, videos that answer that question. 
Three billion. What are the chances that my blog post on that topic is going to be number one? Now, if you notice, there are five pages on my website that actually kind of addressed that question. When I did a search of the Tish website, I found five pages that kind of talked about this. But five in a sea of three billion? Yeah, this ain't necessarily going to be a great question. On the other hand, what we did uncover was this one. Do I have to have my subfloor replaced? Only 8 million results, which significantly less. It's an important question because they get asked a lot. And we had zero content on their website on that topic. Guess what we're going to be considering writing about? The other thing, if you want to go a little further, is you can go into um, the Google keyword search tool and you can search and see how often is this phrase searched every month. So, for example, there are way more searches for engineered hardwood, but there's also a lot less content. What are the best floors for my kitchen? This is a really popular topic. Lots of people are writing about it but less people are looking for it. It's okay to write a blog post on a really niche topic, something that only has two or 3,000 searches a month. Why? Because your, top, your content can rise to the top in that category. But I think it really helps to, the, the things that I really look at is, here's the question, there's not a lot of competition and I got nothing. So that kind of helps me prioritize what I'm going to write about. And then I love this, find alternatives. I took this um, question, what is engineered hardwood? And here you go, 32, 32,600,000 results. This was yesterday. That chart from, was from a while ago. But what I'm doing is I jump right past this and I look at what Google is offering me. Well, here are a bunch of other questions. Now, each one of these already has an answer. Doesn't mean it's a great answer. Doesn't mean I can't put my own spin on it. But look, I did what is engineered hardware, uh, hardwood. Well, what's better, solid or engineered? What are the disadvantages? Is hardwood a laminate? Pros and cons. So I've got all these other potential questions that I could write about. And um, th taking this group of questions back to my client and going, hey, I'm thinking about these, started a conversation and a brainstorm session where we generated a whole bunch more questions. And so if you're stuck Take one question that you know you get asked all the time, but you've already answered it, pop it in here, and you'll find a bunch of other alternatives that you can um, that you can use. The other place that I love to go with um, my uh, search for alternative questions is a place called Answer the Public. And if you go to answerthepublic.com, you type in your question. And again, if you want to just kind of blow this up, and it will generate this chart that looks kind of like this little um, circle. But each one of these branches is a different kind of cluster of related questions. And you can do answer the public with just a word or a phrase or a question. And sometimes you get this huge chart and sometimes you get a really small chart. But it's always a great way to just come up with other questions that are related, that maybe take you down a different path that you never thought about going down before. Okay. So your second assignment, by next Thursday, I want you to have that list of nine questions. And now what I want you to do is I want you to 
use research to kind of guide your real content creation. So take those questions that you think are great, do a little bit of homework, find some alternatives. Um, your go-to place to learn about related is Reddit. That is awesome. If you are, um, Susan, thank you so much. If you are a uh, a fan of Reddit, if you're comfortable navigating it, it's it's a great way to find out what people are talking about. Um, anybody else have any other favorite go-tos where they can um, uh, check on kind of related questions or what people are talking about in their industry? Just go ahead and pop those up there because I, I love... Um, I love, I love learning about new tools. I'm a bit of a geek and I dive into all sorts of different things. But after a while, I find two or three that I'm comfortable with. And that's what I recommend because you can make yourself crazy if you try too many of these. Someone also suggested, and I haven't played with it, in addition to Answer the Public, I think it was called either Answer Socrates or Ask Socrates. And it's also about searching questions and related conversations. Um, YouTube, related videos, yes, 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 that's fabulous. Um, if you go to YouTube, if you are in the how do I phase, if your product would benefit from People, people who want to know, how do I do X, Y, or Z? Go to YouTube and search for, search your phrase on YouTube and look at the videos that come up and look at the topics and the related. And sometimes they're good and sometimes they go way the hell off target. And that's okay too. Um, you just kind of have to play with it and figure out what works best. Okay. FAQs, and this is the third part of um, today's conversation. And as you're answering all these questions and you're writing blog posts, or you're adding information to pages, you should also build a frequently asked question page on your website. It doesn't necessarily need to be in your primary navigation if it um, kind of messes with the flow. But this needs to be the repository. And for you, for your customers, for your employees, it's a great jumping off point. Think about your FAQ page a little bit like the direction sign in a shopping mall. Because if you have a lot of FAQs, that page is going to get really like big. It's going to get, get stuffed with a lot of stuff. So what you want to do is have just little snippets and jump off. But let's talk a little bit more about good FAQ page practice. Number one, why do you need it? Well, um, I started to talk about some of this. FAQs are good for people. Um, it's going to save time for everybody. And then the other thing is that FAQs earn you trust. If you put simple accurate information in one place, people start reading and going, wow, these folks really know what they're doing. That was a good answer. Now, word of caution, because I've, I've definitely seen this on FAQ pages also, where the entire FAQ page is nothing but a sales pitch. Um, okay, Shonda, you've got, and I'm going to hop in and, and talk about this, lots of questions about price. There are too many variables. I don't think you should offer um, online pricing um, because it, it, if, if it's going to like nail you in, what I would do is maybe write a series of posts around some of the variables. So, you know, um, how does X affect pricing? Why is a product with why so expensive. Um, for example, why are all your dishes that include saffron four times as much as anything else? Well, because saffron is a really expensive spice and it's only harvested here, blah, 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 blah. So think about on in your category, again, what are the variables? Um, what contributes to pricing? Um, you know, my flooring company, they don't put quotes on their website. I mean, every now and then they run a special and they have like a hardwooded X or Y, but that's really not their thing. 
But what we did do is we, um, we wrote a series of pieces of content around how to save money on your new floor, ways to manage the cost of your home remodel, things you can do ahead of time to prepare and reduce the price. So you can talk about pricing without talking about pricing. Um, and then the other thing is FAQs are good for SEO. You know, we, we've talked about it um, and they're good for SEO when you have, um, you want to have both the question and the answer real close to each other on your page. If you are um, using a WordPress website, um, there is a plugin called Rich Snippets that um, if you're using Yoast SEO, Rich Snippet will pull that question and serve it up to um, Google search as a rich snippet that'll maybe appear in that group of questions. Um, if you're using um, Rank Math, there is a schema section and you can use that instead. Um, the other thing that questions and answers do is it really helps optimize your website for voice search. I I've seen the numbers, it's it's staggering and it's growing. But think about uh, in terms of how many voice searches are conducted every day. Think about your own life. How often do you pick up your telephone and say, hey Siri, or where is this? Or how do I do that? Right into your phone, you know, hey Google, and something pops up. If your question matches the question the person just asked, and there is an answer right underneath it. Google's going to be like, cool, we're going to send people there. A good, FAU, bleh, a good FAQ page is going to reflect your audience needs. It's going to cover a broad range of questions. Go back to that first, transactional, informational, locational questions. It needs to be updated frequently. Let me say that again. It needs to be updated frequently because Google, Google is always looking for the latest, greatest, and best information. If your FAQ page, even if it's wonderful and informative and, and covers everything you could possibly imagine, as it gets old, Google will consider the information less valid because they're like, surely something has changed and these people haven't changed. It's going to attract new visitors. It it's, should be written in a way that a first time visitor is not going to be um, overwhelmed or confused. And again, the purpose of this page is not to be the final stop. There are little short answers and then links to longer blog posts, informational pages, more detailed answers. Those internal links are a huge boost to your SEO. Spiders actually really like them because they come for this. It's kind of like they come for the appetizer and then you offer them dinner and they're like, oh yes, hungry, and off they go. And it just really will help demonstrate that expertise and authority. And it really establishes you as someone who is knowledgeable in the industry that you want to be recognized in. Use that question answer format. Um, something that, that was very popular for a while that I really recommend against is what I call the accordion, where you see all the questions, but you don't see the answers. Um, some of those accordion tools, it's a nice human um, tool, but it sometimes it hides the answer from Google. So Google only sees the questions and, and it, it just depends on how the page is structured. So I typically recommend don't be doing that. Um, keep your answers short. Um, in educating, you have information under downloadable tips. Um, Great question, Shonda. Um, I, it's not an either or. I think they play together. 
So if you have like a two page white paper that really answers the question, you want to have the question, you want to have a short synopsis as the answer. And for more info, get this download. Here are the pros and cons of the download. And you have to decide what your priority is. Google can't read that PDF. And so all of the content that's in the PDF is a value to the visitor, but not to Google. So on that one hand, it would argue for never doing a download. However, the beauty of the download is that I can't have it if I don't give you my email address. So it's a way of building your, um, your email list. And so if you're using downloads to build the email list, I would have an FAQ page with all of your questions. I would have a snippet that kind of answers or alludes to the answer. And then I would have the, for more information, give us your email address and get this. If, however, you're just giving away the download and you're not collecting email addresses, and that's a whole different subject, then I got to ask you why. Why, if you're just giving away the information, which is fine, that is a perfectly valid strategy, why is it a download and not readable content on your website? Because it's not indexable and you're not building your list, so it's a lose-lose. Does that, hopefully that kind of helps. Um, so again, if you're, if you're grabbing those email addresses, a little bit of hint, and then go from there. You want to link to those deeper places on your website because that's going to drive traffic deeper and deeper and get those people to stay with you longer and longer. But you got to deliver value at each step along the way and avoid jargon. Number one, um, customers hate jargon. Number two, Google hates jargon. The only people that like jargon are you. And as much as this is your website, this is not about you. Okay. When you're building your FAQ page, um, call it FAQ or frequently asked questions. Don't, don't get clever. Um, when I first, my very first website for Roundpeg 19 years ago, I was so clever. I had pages that were called create and educate and generate. And you know what? Google didn't know what they were and neither did my visitors. Um, title the page just this. Um, it does not have to necessarily be in your navigation. Um, you decide where it fits in your page structure. Categorizing group questions. Um, I've seen people who have organized their FAQ page alphabetically, and that's easy for them, but it's not easy for visitors because they have to scroll through the whole list because they don't know necessarily how you've organized it. If you got five questions, alphabetical is fine. If you got 50, you better cluster them. So create categories. Um, you know, how to get started, comparison, your questions about comparisons, whatever, you know, whatever makes sense for you. Um, group all of them. And then on your uh, FAQ page, you can even have a question of, I know this whole page is FAQ, so it seems a little redundant, but the FAQ of the FAQ, you know, you have one or two questions that are going to rise to the top. If those are the questions that get asked the most, Put them up top. Update it regularly and make it easy for people to find. Okay, assignment number three. You can have a month for this one. You will have written your, you will have written, uh, created some of your questions. You've going to identify where those questions are answered on your website. You're going to start consolidating those answers together. You're going to evaluate some different questions and then build your FAQ page. And look at what's working now. Uh, you know, if you've had a website for any length of time, you've got pages on your website that 
at, uh, that answer some of these questions. Go ahead and beef them up and improve them. And look for three kinds of questions, three kinds of pieces of content that are already on your website. So the first is this page ranks well for search, but it doesn't drive traffic. Um, the best place to find this information is in your Google search console because you can identify pages that are showing up in a lot of searches and then you can see whether they are or aren't driving traffic. If you have a page that ranks well, but you're not getting that traffic through, what that means is that your meta description isn't doing it. That however you are describing this page, whatever the excerpt is, you're missing it. People are doing a search for um, what's the difference between a two-door and a four-door car. And your answer comes up and people are skipping over it. And that's because that little description that you have isn't selling it. Go back and start tweaking your page descriptions. The second thing you've got is that it generates regular traffic, but it's not, it, it's not doing anything else. People come to that page and then they, um, they leave. That's, you know, uh, one of the things you can do is look in your Google Analytics or your Google Search Console and see um, that this page is, is an exit page. It means it's the last stop along the way. People come and they leave. What you need to do on this page is you need to clean up this blog post or this page and add a call to action. Add related links, add some information that a, a video for people to watch or something for them to do to take that next step and not leave. And finally, when you find a page that is generating conversions, when you find a page that people are coming to and they're signing up or they're downloading and they're giving you their information, this is a winner. You want to do two things. Number one, you want to promote this page. You want to start sharing it more on social media. It's already getting traffic. People are already coming. Mention it in your newsletter. Kind of drive more traffic to that page. Maybe advertise. And also, beef up that page. Go back in. Add a little divider and add, add 100 words more text. Add another photograph. Add additional information. Tweak the meta description just a smidge and then re-index it on Google Search Console. And develop a plan for re-optimization. Develop a process for routinely going back and looking at your old content. Um, we've been blogging since 2000, I don't know, eight. Seven, we have over 4,500 blog posts on our website. And I can tell you that there's a lot of great information in there that never sees the light of day. And we started going through and updating half a dozen a week, just a new picture, a new layout, a hundred words. How hard is it to write a hundred new words on a topic when you already have this great big article? And you'd be amazed at how much new traffic, oh, and definitely a new call to action, but how much new traffic we're getting by re-optimizing that existing content. So build a content plan, answer questions, mix, get them, generate a mixture of new and re-optimized content, and then share, share, and share. I want to do a, two-second pitch. If you have found this information helpful, look for the 30 Days of SEO. It's available at the digitaltoolbox.club on our training page. And that's going to be the end of the commercial because what I really want to do is answer questions. Fantastic. Love it, Lorraine, always. I know I have a couple questions, and I know uh, we've got a question in the comments already, but you guys, here's what I would love for you to do. If you have questions about anything Lorraine talked about, put a cue in front of that question. It makes it really easy for me to grab it. But also, feel free to share any comments or anything that you felt was 
really eye-opening if you had any aha moments. I know I had a couple of aha moments during this presentation as well. As I said, I am not an SEO expert. I know enough to know that it's important. <laughs> That's what I know. But, you know, and I think a lot of people are that way. Um, but I do think that it is – it overwhelms many people, Lorraine. Mm-hmm. And I think that that – you you did break things down for us. And, I again, I know I had a couple of aha moments. And for me, I know that SEO is very important. I, and, again, I know it's important, but – when it comes to creating content and when it comes to getting stuff out there, sometimes that is all people can handle. They're like, I, I, I can barely get stuff out there, let alone go optimize it and mm-hmm. make sure certain things. But I loved how you you reiterated, hey, you might get questions from your audience or you might get questions all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good content for your website mm-hmm. because if nobody's searching for it or if it's whatever, then like it's maybe that it's not worth your time to put on. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really important is that Sometimes we make assumptions about what's going to work, mm-hmm. and there are some systems that you can put in place or some checks, and I loved how you broke down that process for us, so that was really, really helpful. Um, we do have a couple of questions, and Sean, I wanted to point out this FAQ thing. So <clears throat> I went ahead and pulled up Shonda's um, website, which I'm going to share really quickly here. Mm-hmm. because I do think that you made a really good point. And for me, this was one of my aha moments. And so Shonda's got this page on her site, which is where she's got the information. And I think this is what she was referring to. And down here, it says, here's the download. You can download a homeowner's guide to septic systems. And it is not, it's not gated by an email opt-in. So you do not have to submit an email. So we always say information should never be free. Yes, it's free, but you should have to exchange something like an email. And that is simply kind of like saying, well, if you give me your business card, then I will go ahead and give you this pamphlet, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of like the digital version of it. However, they're not requiring an email. Now, I looked at it. This guide is amazing. Like, it's, it's designed well. It's beautiful. It's got great information. But you made a really good point that if you're not going to gate it, meaning you're not going to get something out of them downloading this, like an email so that you can follow up with them or nurture them, then you should just put the content on the website via blog post or in like a regular page. And for me, that was a really interesting, eye-opening thing that you shared. So I just wanted to pull it up so that we mm-hmm. could look at it. So now that you've seen it, um, what what would you recommend Sean to do here? So what I would do is I would take it uh, maybe a section at a time. I noticed that there's quite a few different um, sections. I might pull one of these illustrations, make that the top of the page and take that section. And then at the bottom say, hey, if you want to download the whole guide, click here. Mm -hmm. And then I would take another section and do the same thing and turn this into, I mean, looking at these, you know, and you've already got these great questions. How do I admit a how do I maintain my septic system? Hello? Uh-huh, that is exactly. a great question. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, make it a blog post. You can still give away the PDF and people will still download it. Um, but that way you're you're not missing out on the benefit of all of this great content that you have written. Yeah, I I think that I, as I was looking through it, I thought, oh my gosh, there's probably eight to ten blog posts in here just in the content of this this guide. So, yeah, Shonda, you've got your homework cut out for you. Uh, mm-hmm. So, or or Matt, maybe <laughs> I'm not sure who she's going to have help with that. But so <laughs> I wanted to go ahead and pull up an example of an FAQ page. Um, that kind of this is a pest control company, of course, and this would be an FAQ page that you were referring to that has the actual content on the mm-hmm. page. I also loved how you talked about the accordion because I see this often, um, and even my platform that I use, I think, it, like has an accordion version. And I'm curious; I would be curious to know if Google is able to see the hidden content, you know, behind the clicking of the button, right? So. I think the accordions are, like you said, a good user experience, but they may not be help helping you from a Google standpoint. But I thought that was really fascinating. I didn't, mm-hmm. I never really thought about that. But I just well, wanted to show the audience an example of an actual FAQ page with questions and answers um, all built in. But also, you made a really good point that you have to come back and revisit this page. So mm-hmm. I loved that example. Cool. 
Okay, cool. So let me get to some questions from our audience here. We've got some questions here. So uh, Courtney Bishop says, for SEO purposes, how often do you recommend posting on your Google My Business page? Mm -hmm. Any SEO tips for those posts? This is a great question. First, Lauren, do me a favor and just explain what the Google My Business page is. So if you have done a search, if you're not familiar with Google My Business, anytime you do a search and you use the words near me, Google will pop up like a map, like a, we, we used to call it the uh, the six pack. There's like a map and two or three companies and then you can click on it and you can see all of them. Um, if you don't have a Google My Business page for your business, we should talk. Um, but if you have a GMB page, um, twice a week, minimum twice a week, maximum twice a week. Isn't that convenient? One number and there is no wavering. Why do I say that? Because when I do a Google search, if your Google My Business page comes up down at the bottom, if you have two posts, they will show up side by side. Remember I said Google is a big fan of recency. And what that means is if you have um, a post that's more than a week old, it disappears. It's still in your profile, but ain't nobody gonna see it. So um, I would set up um, like twice a week, every Monday, every Thursday, just change out one of them because your post will disappear. Now, the beautiful thing is that you start to figure out which posts are doing well. You can reuse them. You can, you can't just reshare it. You got to repost it and recreate it, but you can reuse it. Um, you should always use a nice, keyword rich summary when you put a post um we are finding the things that, well first off you got to have a picture and they make me crazy because you you upload the picture and it looks great and then you see it in the time you know, in in the in the space and it doesn't look so good um if you're going to put text on your pictures um keep it inside a much smaller box so, that, so it looks like there's even a little bit, like a lot of margin around it, um, because when it pulls to the uh, the carousel, you're only going to get the smaller image. Um, the other thing is you def, uh, the kind of stuff that works well, offers, promotions. If you're in a business that's running a promotion or a special um, events, if like if you're running a class, um, that works really well. Um, if you, uh, in addition to posting on Google My Business, the other thing that you should be doing is there's um, a photo section and the photos don't go away. So you want to be adding new photos behind the scenes, new employees, any of that that you can to the main photo section, not the posts. You can also add video. I would definitely include it. Anytime you add something, caption it. And most important, um, when you log into your Google My Business console on the lower right hand side, there is a ask for review button. Click it, grab that link and send it to everybody you work with. Ask for reviews all the time. Let me say that five times more. Ask for reviews, ask for reviews, ask for reviews and two more ask for reviews. <laughs> Do you have an example of a business where you guys are maybe doing this Google My Business activity for that, or one that comes to mind? I just want to show them. Tish Flooring, T-I-S-H, Flooring. Um, they are actually our poster child. I wish that I, I wish that I could say um, uh, we are solely responsible. Yep, that's them. Um, so scroll down a little bit on the page. There, do you see right there the um, the two the the uh, the two uh, little like snippets side by side? Mm -hmm. So so you can go through and find the older stuff, but really all all Google shares is the new stuff. And also, not wait, okay. So they, um this is one of my favorites the the piggy bank in the trash. Um, and you'll notice that if you flipped through that we reuse that every couple of weeks. It okay. gets yep, there it, is. Yep. it gets incredible traffic regularly. Very few people will do this where they'll actually scroll over and really dive in and look at it. But these are examples of the posts that we do. And you can see 
there's always a little bit of text and we are constantly experimenting with, um, you know, does the video work better? Does this one, the pig in the trash can with the money on the, <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you how much, how many views it gets, how many click throughs to the, I mean, that little learn more button. Um, if you will highlight down there, that little learn more button, when you create a post on Google My Business, you can change what the, hmm. um, learn more goes to, what the learn more, but you can also change the words. Okay. It can be subscribe. It can be buy. You have, you have options of what your CTA is. This page gets a ton of traffic. And you will notice down at the bottom, we got the join our newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, to give you some perspective, these guys, um, you know, flooring companies, an individual sale, it's not a $50 sale. Right. Anybody who's replaced flooring. So the fact that they're seeing 150 phone calls from Google My Business, 150 phone calls a month from Google My Business is huge, mm -hmm. huge. Now, do we get that, um, do we get that kind of um, reaction on every GMB page? No, um, this is a page we've worked with for a long time, we've cultivated. The other thing is scroll down just a smidge to the review section and you can see um, what their rating is, and you can see how many reviews they have. Um, I think it I, oh. a little bit higher. They've got a 5.5 above the chart. Go up a little bit. Oh, there we go. 104 there go. Google reviews. Yes. So they've got five out of five is their score, and I think they have over 100 reviews. So what happens is every time they get another review, Google looks at them and goes, oh, people really like them. And so um, that helps as well. So we have, Lucas has a great question too, but Shonda here has a good follow-up question regarding Google My Business. So Lucas, I'm skipping yours and I'm coming back to it. She says, I've recently started posting on Google My Business. I've been using Canva to create things for this, put, but have been posting them as pictures. Would this be better as a post versus a picture? So the pictures I'm assuming she's referring to the photos so, section. Yeah, so if you click... Um, yeah, see, so, so the, the photo section here, these are great for employee pictures, for, um, uh, product photos. Um, but the Canva things I would definitely, yeah. Okay. Like little videos. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, um, videos are good here. Things that are kind of more how do I put it? The Canva stuff is more like little ads, like social uh -huh. posts. I would definitely be using the post and reusing the ones that, that work well for you. Um, everything you're sharing in a post, you can link to a specific place on your website. Uh -huh. I might also try doing some FAQ. So find a frequently asked question, do a Canva, ask the question, partially answer it in the post, read more. Got it. So I think I see what, what Shonda is referring to. She's not adding text to these posts. She's just doing the kind of the ad looking thing. This one has some text to it. So I think what you're recommending is that she use more of the imagery, but definitely add context with the text section mm -hmm. of the post. So there is a difference between a between adding a post to your Google My Business versus adding a photo to the photo section. They are two completely different sections. And so yes. I wanted to point that out, that your photos will show up here. Photos are good too, because if somebody is doing a search and they click on the images tab, that's where some of your photos may show up as well. Mm -hmm. But really what, what Lorraine is focusing on here is the post section of your Google My Business. So I will give Shonda a shout out because she's actually posting She's posting, right? So that's very good. Most businesses are not utilizing this feature um, at all. So very good. Okay, cool. So 
Lucas has a question as well. And before I go too much further, I want to make sure everybody knows, uh, Julie has posted in our Facebook in the comments here, she's got a link to a survey. So make sure that you guys grab that link and go take that survey for us when we're done here, because we like to use that. We use it as getting information from you, hearing what you want, what what went well, what didn't go what great and all those things too. So make sure you do check out that survey for us. So Lucas says, you mentioned a few places to seek out what to answer, what the people are asking. Is there a resource or a list of these links out there to reference? So um, I am grabbing, uh, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm putting a couple in the chat so okay. we can share those, maybe add them in the follow-up notes. Sure. Um, uh, I would do a Google search. Um, you know, like I said, the the two that I, uh, the one I use the most is Answer the Public. Um, somebody else suggested Answer Socrates, and I've added that. Um, but I would, um, and I know Lucas, because we we chatted a little bit on, on Twitter, I would, um, I'd even throw it out on Twitter and ask people, hey, I'm doing research on this. Where, you know, where where do you go to find information on this? Where do you go to find questions? And you may get ignored, but you may also get some great resources. That's how I found the um, answer Socrates. Nice. Okay, very good. I think that um, <laughs> Lucas says, I was waiting for that answer. Google it, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, and we'll take one more question here from Shonda. She says, do you feel optimizing Google My Business with posts and pictures gives more value versus purchasing Google AdWords? This is a great question. This is a great question. If you do if you do GMB right, there. Uh, so um, I'm going to use my flooring guy as an example uh -huh. again. Um, a click to a website might cost you 10 bucks in competitive industries it might be 25 dollars so to get a hundred clicks to your website you're going to spend a thousand dollars twenty five hundred dollars right if you can get and and we've done it for this client we get you know 150 phone calls 100 clicks um we we figured out that for him we were generating a level of engagement comparable to a five thousand dollar a month ad spend hmm. and the way that we figured that out is we were actually running google ads we were looking at how many clicks we were getting we were working the google my business page and we found that with the right content we didn't need the google ads we just didn't. Yeah. Now, and, and this is my word of caution, and I have been saying this to my clients, I think for four years now. At right now, Google My Business is free advertising. Emphasis on the right now. Right. There will come a point where Google My Business is no longer free. It's going to happen. It may not happen this year. It may not happen next year. It will happen. And when it does, you're going to have to decide whether or not you want to pay for it. But it's free, people. Dance <laughs> while you know, make hay while the sun shines. Yeah. I, I, a quick question for you. So with Google, my business, because I know I get this question a lot. Do you think that Google My Business is a good fit for a local type of business? Or what about, like, for example, Digital Toolbox, right? So you have Digital Toolbox. That's not really a local business. I mean, you're a, it's a virtual mm -hmm. online e-learning community, right? It's a subscription-based platform. Talk about, just really briefly here, the difference between how a more, uh, you know, brands like you and me look at something like Google My Business versus local. Obviously, it makes tons of sense for a local well, business, right? But talk yes, about uh, the whole people that maybe are a little bit in a different world. So Google My Business is all about local. Um, it, it, is, it is designed, it is the Google product to support small local businesses. So if you have a national, international market, I mean, and, and Roundpeg is a good example. We have customers in Trinidad, Canada, Mexico, but 50% of our customers are right around the corner. Recognize that Google My Business is important for them. So let's go to the digital toolbox. I, 
I have a huge audience in Australia. I have a huge community in, in the UK because of some relationships there. Google My Business doesn't really do much for that, but I still have a page on Google My Business for the digital toolbox because I do have a local community. And my vision is that when all of this is over, we're going to have another in-person digital toolbox conference. And so um, there is a, there is a, a play for that. It will not hurt, um, even if you are national or international, to tell Google, hey, we work everywhere, but this is our neighborhood. And that's really where it comes into play. I do want to make a quick plug for the SBDC because we're actually doing a really cool project. If you are a client of the SBDC, you need to talk to your consultant about your Google My Business page because we actually are working with them on uh, creating and updating pages for their clients. And so nice. if you're working with the SBDC, if you're not, maybe now's a good time to start right. um, <laughs> because they um, they have some, uh, the SBDC has got, I, I was absolutely blown away. They've got great resources. Um, a lot of it because of the CARES Act for support on your website mm -hmm. and Google My Business and Peggy, I don't even know whatever else there is, but but they have got they've got the tools that you need right now to get out from underneath this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think that's a great great reminder um, and a and a and not really a plug, but just a reminder that you know there's a lot of free available resources out there. So and they you know the ISBDC is always a place even if you're not sure what's out there just reach out to Peggy or somebody over there because they they have such a wealth of knowledge with the available resources to help and all the things too so well Lorraine this was again as always jam-packed with tons of value I did put a link to your digital toolbox dot club uh, in the comments because I do think that it is something that people should check out and you have some free content that's available there too that is super amazing so mm -hmm. thank you again for spending time with us today and helping us with today's presentation and you know i'm sure we'll have you back again for the 95th time um over here with ECI social media group but it's always a pleasure lorraine and we are forever grateful for you to uh volunteer time to help us out today so thank you so 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 much my pleasure and i'm looking forward i used to complain about driving up to muncie but i'm looking <laughs> forward <laughs> to coming back up to Muncie when you guys are live and in person. Yeah, it's not that bad. As long as there's no construction on 69, <laughs> then you're good to go. So it's not too bad. All right. Well, thanks again, Lorraine. We'll see you soon. Oh, my goodness. Always. I'm telling you, I have a whole page of notes here. I wrote down all the assignments. We have to write down questions for each of those phases that she gave us, which was information, navigation, commercial investigation, and transaction. And then we're supposed to use research. This is key. I think this is a step that most people miss. I know that I've skipped it many a times, um, and that is to figure out, should you actually be answering some of those questions that are getting asked? And then build your FAQ page and update it. Update it. That was a key takeaway that I took today was to make sure you're refreshing the FAQ page because I do think that sometimes we develop those FAQs, you put it out there, you slap it up on a website page, and then it's there and it's done, right? But keep revisiting it and keep refreshing it because Google does like updated content. And then last, it was develop an, op an optimization plan. I loved it. So really great stuff today. Again, a real, real quick reminder to take the survey. So it's up in the, the comments. Judy put that comment in there with the link to the survey uh, for, for that. It's You don't have to provide much information information other than just your feedback. We do love to get that feedback. It helps us know what you guys want and need. And then of course, don't forget next month, I'll be, I'm going to announce the giveaway in a second, if any of you are waiting. So next month we are meeting again, May 20th. So that is May 20th is when we will be meeting again. I feel like maybe I gave the wrong date before, but May 20th. Now here's the deal. I need you to make sure that you are following our Facebook page and if you like YouTube, then I want you to make sure you have subscribed to that channel. But more importantly, go over to ecisocialmediagroup.net. That is our page. And I need you to click join now. It's not a membership, but you are getting yourself on our email list because I suspect change is coming. I suspect I'm doing, we're doing research. We're meeting with the Innovation Connector. They have new technology. I am exploring what this is going to look like for us to be hybrid. So in person, 
and virtual. So we're working on that. Um, I'm working with you know our committee. We're all working on what that looks like, what we need to do to make sure that we can be safe, but also start to lean into what this new normal is going to look like. And I know that some of us are getting tired of that phrase, new normal, but it is a reality and it is absolutely what we need to be thinking about. We do not know if we'll ever be doing things the way we used to do. And you know what? I'm okay with that because it's we should always be evolving and adapting regardless of a pandemic, right? I think that sometimes the beauty in the black is that the pandemic really pushed some people to actually do some things that they should have already been doing. And so we have to look at it that way. So maybe we should have been, or maybe we already should have been doing some live streaming and some hybrid stuff. Now we're actually going to be looking at and being pushed into that direction. So for me, I'm excited about the opportunity to evolve and to change. So I hope that you'll be excited about the opportunity to receive it maybe differently and to get involved a little bit differently as well. So get on our email list because that is where we will be sharing the details with what is going to be changing and when. So I'm just letting you know, we're looking at the uh, adaptations. We're looking at making changes. We're looking at our schedule. And so in order for you to keep in touch with us and to know what's going on, get on that email list. That's the best way that you're going to get that information from us. And of course, as I said, follow our pages and subscribe and get the notifications so that you know when we go live. All right, so today's winner. Now, it probably isn't gonna come to a huge surprise, but I picked Shonda today because one, she asked amazing questions that I think were probably extremely helpful for all of you. And I sort of picked on Shonda, I, I didn't pick on her. I pulled up her stuff and we used her as a live example in order to help you too. So Shonda, if you're still watching, make sure you send our ECI social media group Facebook page a direct message. Send a DM with uh, a note that has your email Email address, and we will get you connected to Matt and Angie so that they can find a way to get you your gift card to Rosebud Coffee. So again, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being so engaging. This was really great. Um, I really want to just, again, reiterate, please take this survey for us. It definitely helps us. We love getting your feedback. So until next time, my friends, right? Next month, we may be in person. I don't know. <laughs> I hope we can figure this out. I'm hoping that we might be ready, but we may not. So we may be here again virtual only, or we may be doing a hybrid approach. But make sure you uh, get that on your calendar every third Thursday of the month. That is when we meet. And I would love to see you back for more next time. We've got great presenters lined up for the rest of the year. And if you're interested in being a sponsor, send us a DM as well. We simply just require that. If we're back in person, you serve breakfast, but we also are willing to let you just offer us a gift card to give to our audience. So, all right, my friends, until next time, I'll see you next month.